morning. We'll give folks a, oh, hey, Nikolai, I'll just drop hey. me into the channel. We'll let, uh, give it a few minutes, let people join. Did you attend the Nephi Summit last week? Nope, I don't know that it's happened. Was it a virtual one? Well, it was virtual and in person. Mm -hmm. I didn't go in person, but I did attend it virtually. Do they have re recordings? I hope so. It looks like the recordings have been um, uploaded to the wiki page for the event. Okay. And they have one recording per day. So like 12 hours worth of recording. And then they have timestamps by the different talk areas in the wiki. So you got to scroll through or whatever to the specific time there's some good stuff um 
Tellus was there talking. Orange did a, I think it was a virtual talk. A lot of stuff on ORAN interoperability. All right, speaking of recording, this call is recorded. CNF Working Group, <clears throat> um, these meetings, recordings will be posted on the CNCF uh, YouTube and the CNF Working Group playlist. All right, um, you got any agenda topics, Nikolai? Nope, not really. Let's see, upcoming events. Um, KCDs continuing. Have you attended any of those, Nikolai? The local regional KubeCon mm -hmm. Club at Conde? No, no, no. I'm good. Mm. I think Tom is going to be at KCD in UK, London, from Vodafone. I don't know how you get those on. We we had one that was going to happen pretty close to myself, but it it got canceled right before it was up, unfortunately. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Um, KubeCon and Cloud Native Telco Day coming up in November. And I guess we do have, that one's virtual. Um, we have a stream, I should say, for that. Are you re Are you connected remotely for that one, Nikolai? Are you going to be in person, Chicago? Uh, Chicago, no, not in person. Yeah, well, I might, I'm not registered for remote yet, but might consider. All right. Hmm. Trying to ramp up interest to be able to communicate for the EU, what needs to happen there. It's a lot of changes. So you didn't see at NFIO, I guess I'll just say it here, but since it was announced there and it's now at least public on the wiki, um, there's, a, and I, I think more announcement specifics will be happening at KubeCon, but <clears throat> there's been an effort between CNCF and LFM to try to provide some type of unified um, testing and certification and a bunch of other stuff which would be related to the CNF working group and um, the test suites used by Annika at RC2 already and by Silva, Silva project and Linux Foundation Europe is using both Annika and the CNCF um, test suite and best practices as part of what they're doing. So trying to find a, a way for the elephant and CNCF um, domain specific stuff to be more unified when people are looking to work on them or what where they should go. So there'll be more of that like during Cloud Node Telco Day and KubeCon announced and trying to figure out where that should be. So it'd be good to get feedback on stuff like the CNF working group home, where it should land, what makes sense, um, 
there's been some feedback from CSPs about having continuing to have the, I guess, the horizontal across all domains um, input and collaboration from CNCF while having the domain specific stuff in LFN. So I think it would be good to figure that out. Um, I've been back and forth myself. It seems like something like the CNF working group would be good to have within CNCF though, um, for itself, even if maybe uh, telecom specific challenges would be addressed directly under LFN, uh, having best practices that were maybe even just if we just talk about cloud native best practices and not just networking and telecom specific, there'd be some type of working group to feed back in, maybe have um, expand what happens in this group. We have had some people note that the best practices that we've been working on and publishing are applicable for any application. So you could just say cloud native applications running in Kubernetes and, and then talk about platform stuff. If you look at things like Deutsche Telekom and Dash Chef for deploying, doing deployments, and they're using Flux. Well, they're using GitOps patterns and those are not specific at all for Telcom. Those are, you know, would be good for anybody to pick up. And even Nefio, they're, their use cases and stuff are really focused in the networking world, but what they're building on, especially like KPT is not net networking and telecom specific. KPT is you know usable by anybody. So anyways, we need to figure that out um, where that goes. And I think that would relate to stuff like co-chair nominations. If the work, seeing if, if this working group stays under CNCF, um, where does it fit? Does it just keep floating at the top? Do we do something like put it under the app delivery? We we were kind of staying separate because we thought it was a little bit of tag networking, a little bit of tag app delivery, and several other things. Um, if it goes, if this group ends up migrating over to LFN, then what do we do about co-chair nominations? Does that make sense? Yeah. You have any immediate thoughts? Uh... Yeah, I mean, it's <laughs> interesting to see how something like this evolves over time. And as you said, you certainly, it, at some point you realize that uh, hmm. so are, are not that specific as one kind of thought in the beginning. But I think that that's more or less what was the point of the whole, of the whole effort, right? That um, whatever telcos require um as like is raising the bar for overall like uh, requirements towards the infrastructure the reliability high availability and so on and so forth all of this actually can benefit the rest of the ecosystem as much as as telcos right and and the other way around all the practices around specifically around deployment uh, you know the flexibility that the cloud native is bringing uh, it's definitely benefiting the telco so uh, I think that the ultimate goal, <laughs> what what I'm hearing here, is more or less like we're close to it, and it's like that that there's not that much difference between the telcos uh, and and the regular, uh, let's say, enterprise type of uh, wo wo workloads. Okay, of course the the differences are there and probably will stay, but they are kind of 
sh shrinking, <laughs> as you just said uh, about the dust shift uh, and that. In the end, the, the 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 practice is just regular application practices, not not anything that's that's new. And if you if you look about it, I mean, the version of the telcos like twenty years ago, uh, there was still all these crazy <laughs> specific protocols going around, and now we are talking that even the, the the way that the applications are being deployed are more or less aligned with the rest of the world, which is which is a huge 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 step forward. So where where should it live? Uh, yeah, maybe as you said, being part of the app delivery probably makes sense. Um, I don't know what what other options are there. I mean, like specifically within CNCF. Um, hey, Victor. Hello, Taylor. We were mentioning uh, what happened during the NFIO as far as the discussion about CNCF and LFN, and then where would that put this working group? You know, where should it land? And that would be suggestions and recommendations for CNCF and LFN on that. And that relates to like the coach nominations. If we have a something like this working group, whatever, if it keeps the same name, change the name or whatever, but if it stays in CNCF, fine for nominations. If it doesn't, then does it matter? Um, and, and there is a request from, I'm hearing from like some CSPs to have something overlapping. So it's fine to have a unified front in wherever it should be so the domain specific stuff maybe the testing and certification under LFN but where does where do you have other stuff um and there are people that are happy for the adoption that Nikolai was talking about where um more of the general purpose cloud native practices that are the same everywhere are being used the same in telco space and it where telco is no different than try to use the same practices so where should this working group go um where would you put something like dash chef if it was a you know i mean it's you know specifically for Dasha telecom yeah. but what if you had a a version of this that was just take the engine and the ideas and not say it's for telecom it seems like okay this would just be a get ops based um deployment thing kind of like nefio is really general purpose capability yeah um so so i think like um i, I think that there is like a more devops adoption and i, I i'm going to try to expand that idea i mean we have been saying that for for years and i guess it, it is not something new but the way that i see the things is like if we see in the past um usually operators try to build the infrastructure and provide whatever that is available like a, they have srioV devices or <clears throat> any special um other features so and and usually developers didn't have like that knowledge. Like um, even in, in the, the way that we uh, validate or certify um, workloads, like, I mean, I can take a, think about it like a, in the past where, where we have uh, programs which were certifying um, just infrastructure, like uh, using Anuked and, and that uh, all the efforts and all the initiatives were just focusing in just infrastructure and Later, you have to certify your your workloads, like with or programs. I, I guess, like the major difference in FIO is, I, I I feel like it's more like application driven. Like, who is going to dictate what you need from your infrastructure perspective? It's obviously it's going to be the the the, the app. So, 
So now the CNF, the vendors, has to dictate like, okay, this is my app and this is the things that I need for my app. And the infrastructure has to provide that like a, and I guess that's, that's a major difference like a, because in the past, yeah, you, you have two, two different groups provide different, two different things and no one was sharing things. And I guess that's a secret sauce for me. Like an FIO is like offering like saying, well, this is my, my package, my KPT package, which is providing this particular uh, CNF application. And the CNF application requires these uh, cluster requirements. And if those things are provided or not provided, or we have to create like a new cluster just for this single app, uh, I have to create it. I guess that, that's a major difference um, compared with the other applications and other ways to do it, things in the past. I, I mean, maybe it's my just perspective or, so, so in that sense, I guess, coming back for like uh, what we have is trying to combine um, the, 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 the certifications programs like, uh, like the, LA, the elephant certification program with the CNF, CNCNF um, program, I guess a little bit make sense because I guess now mainly the, the application is going to dictate the requirements and we need to think about different ways to certify workloads or provide like a, a secure way to uh, provide certain level of certainty for the for the consumers. Um, are you referring to the telecom workload still? L like um like like a while like um or just workloads in general no just well in this particular case yeah telco, telco workloads i guess i mean so the if, there's still a does a request to have like cloud nativeness for the telecom workloads it would be how do you help with those additional ones and fio is trying to cover those with what are the practices for using operators and other things for operator pattern and other stuff to provide additional capabilities for CNFs. Um, on, on the other hand, I don't find that to be um, make, make uh, a, a very strong driving motivation that telecom workloads are so different from everything else that you're going to need operator patterns with a framework like Nefio that would never be used anywhere. The very first place I think of would be similar to uh, telecom edge deployments where you may say, we need this type of performance. We need this, you know, whatever capabilities and it's different from other applications. But then think about manufacturing on edge and not the not the communication standpoint just the ca the capabilities for you know near um you know instant performance or whatever you know real time performance when you say real time it's always uh what do you mean by real time but you ai models push to the edge and having to do um decisions that are near real time to run manufacturing it things that have nothing to do with potentially the the communication side so you may still want that you may need to have like high speed networking capabilities but that can be in addition to say ai models that are pushed down and then run locally on the edge and then are making decisions and you need to make sure that the processing power or maybe you have specialized chips or something like that or you have sensing data so you have specialized equipment and you need to interface with that so then how do you do that and you think well you should have a you could still have a modular application and something is focused on the ai model and something is focused on gathering sensing data so i i still think like a lot of the same 
challenges are going to be in other domains um yeah yeah i guess like i mean what what, what i was trying to say like like uh maybe in the past like uh i mean i can take for example anarchist as an example we were trying to model or expose as many capabilities as possible like okay the infrastructure has to have uh, support for multiple needs and you have maybe uh, i mean just the the model or the, the reference you have to have like, like uh, maybe modules or genus or anything like that but probably um your cnf never required that like i mean it, it was super it was created like a, with a single interface it was working fine and it had to uh, and there is no reason to think about an extra uh network interface so i think that's i guess the major difference like in the past we were like trying to expose as much as, as much as capacities as possible um even when we probably know that the the, the, the workloads never going to consume all of them or are just a portion of them so i guess i i think now the, the difference is like okay well maybe as you said like a message a traditional workload like that doesn't require like a, anything special, like high performance or anything like that. So I guess who has to dictate how the infrastructure has to be, it's mostly like the application per se, and who is going to express the intent, like this is my intent of uh, infrastructure. I know that you, I have all these capabilities, but I just need this this particular thing. Totally makes sense. As far as communicating that intent, dr intent driven um, configuration <laughs> and deployment and all of those things, that those type of patterns are not specific to telecom. We're telling mm -hmm. the telecom application developers and you know whoever's doing deployment and the consumers that this is the practices. These are the how you should actually do it. That's what we're trying to say, and that's not telecom specific. We are trying to help the telecom take on practices, but we also mm -hmm. want other people to do the same thing. So then when those application developers for networking apps are trying to inform the platform or destination wherever they're going, what they need that they're doing in a cloud native way. Um, so that I guess this gets back to you know the question, and we're not saying today, but we need to be thinking about it. Where should this working group go? You know, when it says a CNF right here, containers should handle single concern and service. We really are just saying any application, any application running in cloud native environment should try to have each of its containers handling only a single concern. So you break your services. This is related to microservice patterns. And we want to encourage that. We were targeting with the use cases in the language, we were targeting the telco domain and networking um, application developers and trying to communicate that because we're saying this domain is behind really is why we're doing it. We're saying you're not taking advantage of DevOps patterns. You're not taking advantage of Microsoft is micro service architecture patterns and practices. And if you're running in those environments where um, they were designed these platforms, Kubernetes was designed to run microservices. So if you're not running microservices, then you're going to be limited in some ways on Kubernetes because it was designed that way. But where should we go? Do we do we try to encourage that there's a CNF working group equivalent to what we're doing here within LFN, Victor? Uh, the you know I've I've been on the Anakit project along with you for years and 
it's not the same as the CNF working group. The way that we've been doing it, what we've been trying to get through. And should this group move under LFN? Should this group stay under CNCF? Should we change it to make it more generic? Put it under, I think, Nikolai, you were saying maybe under the app delivery. What do you think, Victor? Well, uh, I was talking last week with uh, Oliver. Uh, Oliver is about like they as a uh, consumer of these uh, particular programs uh, are the implications. Um, uh, and you think about like a from the con consumer or customer point of view, like uh, they have, if, if we have two separate programs where they have to pay for every single uh, membership and in order to get the, the badge and all the things, um, yeah, you are putting basically the, the 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 bar more higher. Like, okay, I'm going to pay two memberships. I'm going to apply for two different programs and I'm going to get the double of the badges. So I'm expecting the double thing, so the double of benefits. Um, I'm not sure if you are providing that particular double of benefits. Um, so, so probably the, the answer is like, if we are offering the double of benefits, the double of uh, customers or the double of uh, income for those uh, participants, I guess it makes sense to, to keep them separately. Like, I mean, just trying to, to be more like, try to have some empathy for, for them. Like, a, um, the other thing is also regarding um, try to coordinate efforts. I know that usually we are pretty much the same people working in, in both places. So maybe that can reduce the number of disconnection. So I see more reasons to try to unify efforts instead of keeping them separately. But of course, like uh, they're completely different two topics, uh, different domains. One is obviously more for infrastructure, for people supporting these cloud service providers, and this is more for um, CNF vendors. Or another. So obviously the, the, the expectations and the things are more more different. Um, I don't know. Um, to keep it separate. Um, well, we have been doing this for years, and maybe um, we have seen the trends and the benefits. So, and also we have seen the trend that is going with Anoket um, in, the, in the last few years. So maybe it's time, it's time to rethink about it and maybe uh, change a little bit and experiment new new ways to improve it. Probably, probably it could be fine to just at least try and. From the vendor side, I guess I, you know, I don't, I don't know what that would look like. Um, someone like Intel, they're contributing directly to Kubernetes, um, Multis, being a CNI, they're part of the network uh, plumbing working group, and under Kubernetes, and they're part of other things directly in CNCF. I, they're also part of LFNs, so it seems like the company, probably just all companies, but whether you're, you're creating the product or consuming, you know, you got to decide where you're benefiting. Thinking about the CSPs and why they would want to be a part of both, um, so they are domain specific when you think of them as a company, like, mm -hmm. okay. It makes sense that, you know, Linux Foundation Networking is helping to drive and listen. That's their domain. Or just telecom is under networking. It's within networking. There's a lot of different areas on networking. Um, on the other hand, 
you have them using Flux and Cilium and, you know, Multis and of course Kubernetes. So if they're not part of the Kubernetes community, then how are they going to have their feedback and their challenges directly heard? Um, you could say that they have it heard by, say, LFN, and LFN is going to go listen, and LFN is going to be part of the community, but now it's indirect. So the end user is not giving feedback directly to those projects. So in my opinion, that doesn't make sense. And I know that at least some of them aren't going to separate. So, you know, Deutsche, Deutsche Telekom, they are you know, using Flux, they're going to stay part of the CNCF and Kubernetes community, but they're also doing stuff with, you know, pro there's projects within LFN. And I don't know how that should fit. Um, you know, I I have suggested in the past that maybe Linux Foundation should have some type of dual membership for groups that really want to be part of everything. Uh, you know, I don't know what that'd look like. Yeah. More than a single me membership, but less than having two memberships or whatever. As you add more, it becomes cheaper. I don't know. This is me on the outside just thinking, but um, those that are trying to take on cloud native practices. So if you look at, um, say, TELUS, they're running networking applications serverless on AWS Lambda. They, that's not traditional telecom practices. They're not running some of the traditional applications the, for them to be able to do that in production right now. You know, Dasha, Dasha Telecom launched a production version of their uh, Kubernetes on bare metal that's deployed from GitOps uh, a few weeks ago. And that's in production running 5G, um, you know, traffic right now that's also not traditional and it seems like there should be direct feedback into the cloud native cncf community for the projects that they're, they're using directly into kubernetes but they're also needing stuff i think from projects like nefio which are going direct moving migrating into lfn from lf and um, I, I don't know who's using um, VPP-based networking applications in production, but I know that there's vendors that are writing VPP, so, and they're running them on Kubernetes. So now we have, you know, definitely networking focus at FDIO, so LFN project, but running in Kubernetes. So there there needs to be something. Victor, there needs to be some type of something where we can have them collaborating and continuing to work together. Um, yeah, what I, what I think that we cannot continue doing the same thing and expecting some results. Like, a, um, yeah, that makes um, sense. I, I don't know what it that looks like though. So that you know, if if the um, potentially like the you know we're I think we're still we're tr still trying to figure this out, and by the time we get to KubeCon Cloud Native Day, then some of it'll be decided, and some of it still be decisions. There is a workshop happening during KubeCon to continue these conversations, but um, the test suite and the certification that are domain specific seems like it makes sense. It's really, where do the different things go? And that's the question. Where should something like this working group go, which was trying to get best practice feedback? And maybe there needs to be a change. Um, you know, what we were talking earlier, and Nick, I was saying maybe under the app delivery or something like that. Maybe if, if there is a change, Victor, but it's within CNCF and getting behind something specific would be good or maybe it does need to move to the elephant mm. okay well yeah I mean, by the way nicolai uh are you expecting to are you coming to the chicago the cube can i'm sorry no no 
No this time, okay. No. One Shooting for zero. Paris. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well. Yeah. All right. Well, anything else? Um, no, I guess. But that's, that's everything. All right. Um, I'm still interested in writing up the best practice stuff. And I, if nothing else, we'll take content and try to put together some larger paper like um, this issue is by adding the practices we have. I still think something like this would be useful wherever this <clears throat> group goes, whatever the future. And Victor, we were talking about looking at best practices from NEFIA. Now that we're through the technical summit, if you have some thoughts or ideas on that, let me know. Okay. Yeah. Nikolai, do you have any best practice ideas? Somewhere where people aren't talking about them and we should try to push them forward? Hmm. Nothing comes to mind at this point, but I might think of is this the the the, the list of the categories? Yeah, just think of it as areas to inspire. Areas. Yeah. Probably is gonna need a another round of adjustments based on mm -hmm. how people are currently talking about stuff. I think that observability and the, the diagnostics, of course, the, 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 these are big topics that at least I have kind of came across about. I mean, I don't, I don't know what we have added here, but I mean, uh, and it's. I don't think anything yet. There's no best practice proposed. We might mm -hmm. have like GitHub issues about observability, or there's definitely discussions, but there is no publish best practice oh. so if there's like a specific challenge <clears throat> to put forward where we need to have um i guess specific maybe to the telecom networking domain here's here was one that somebody put forward i guess it would be observability and I wrote it down and put, push the issue up. But I mean, if when, something you're thinking when, of. When you talk observability and diagnostics, you, you might want to, I mean, you, you you have at least two two kind of viewpoints. One is for the process or, you know, the application itself. And the other one is the outside, like the communication. And, and telcos are at least legally uh, required to, to be able to observe, you know, and to monitor the external traffic. So that's one thing that's kind of you know <laughs> a must do so essentially the infrastructure that's there should should be able to 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 provide these capabilities you know if this um, this kind of best practice but I mean, <laughs> you kind of have to to provide it in any case <clears throat> anyway That sounds like something we should have put in um, to this practice. We we did talk about observability for how this practice. Mm -hmm. If you have everything like as a monolith, <clears throat> then you aren't going to be able to see what's going on. Between the <clears throat> services that are talking, it's related. To what you're talking about. Uh -huh. So 
So I don't know if if you're talking more of like a non-functional observability requirements, and then we'd need to break down what are functional requirements to meet that. But think about it, and then maybe come back and write that up. And Victor, if you come up with something that you think is relevant for the NFAO, KPT configuration stuff or GitOps or whatever, or it could be the operator stuff you're talking about. All right. Great. Thanks, everyone. Have a good day and a yeah. good week. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, Taylor. Bye-bye.